down, people. How is life in the G-verse? Interesting little story before the story. I'm in the gym. I'm working out. And there's these two Armenian dudes. I know what an Armenian dude is because I've had done business with a few, so I know the look. And they're talking, right? I'm doing deadlifts. So I'm over there minding my business. And I hear one says, my dad, he's dating a black chick. And the other guy, our man, goes, what? Really? I didn't know your dad was that cool. And they both start giggling like kids because they were like 20 something. Shit cracked me the fuck up. <laughs> I went back to my workout. Everyone's not racist as much as many people want to believe that. But getting to my life as a day laborer, really thought about that. Just, you know, it's amazing how one conversation can give you so much insight. And it made me think about the early days of going to Labor Ready. It may still be there. I don't know. I haven't gone by there. But this is probably the most obscene thing that I saw the whole time there. It's still for, I was messed up for many weeks after observing this. This was from the Marietta location. I had a car then and we got, and this is when Rooms to Go first came to Atlanta. They had these huge warehouses up in Lawrenceville, Swanee area. So, you know, if you didn't have a car, you couldn't get to that ticket and it paid more money than other ones. And it was actually like long-term because they just kept sending people there constantly. And I think Rooms to Go was hiring folks on. Well, I'm there. It's not bad work. It's uh, inside the warehouse. I mean, I worked at Yellow Freight. I worked at Watkins. I worked at UPS. I worked at FedEx. So I wasn't really unfamiliar with the environment. And it's pretty simple stuff. Match up the labels, match up the tags, put it by the door, put it in a truck. Pretty simple stuff. Well, it wasn't so much the job because really, it was probably one of the cushiest jobs that I had when I was doing the labor pool thing because they followed OSHA guidelines. You would get breaks, uh, they had a break room, and this is where the fuckery takes off. The break room was where people took break. Some people took two breaks, some people took three, some took four. They had this horn that was like, they would go off and everyone would break at the same time. One day, we're in there, and normally fuckery goes on about, like, yeah, I fucked this bitch this weekend, and people will start lying on their dick and shit. Well, this day was very unusual. I'm one of the last ones to get in there, and it's kind of quiet. None of the fuckery that normally goes on. Then I um, hear that some dude, dude, some family member was killed in prison and they were talking about it so that's why it was so quiet and then you would think that would promote promote more solemn moments but no 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 this this is the labor pool this is the labor pool these are some of the most interesting outrageous characters that you will ever meet so do you know someone just lost a family member in jail shanked and this other dude was like wow man i remember so he proceeds to take off his wife beater and show all of his shank wounds. He said, yeah, they got me here in cell block C. They got me here in D. But you know, I'm a tough motherfucker. You know, I'm a tough motherfucker. I feel sorry for your fam, but you know, prison is for tough motherfuckers. And you know, then dude was like, he just like, you're right. He was a weak little bitch. He was a weak little bitch. And I'm just sitting there like, what the hell? Then. You would think that would be the end of it. Mm -mm, no, 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 no. Then other dudes start talking about their other experiences of being shanked, cut, and shot. Well, dude's like, okay, okay, motherfucker shank you, you know, you, you get a little help. But when you get shot, when you get shot, you know, and it's just you on the street, that's a little different, you know. And then this dude proceeds to pull up his shirt and he's got like four 
closely grouped puncture wounds from getting shot. And he's like, that was nine millimeter hollow points, motherfucker, hollow points. Then he turned around and showed his back and there was all of this, this scar tissue where the bullets had exited. Then, you would think that would be enough. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Oh, no. Other dudes start to get up. Then this old dude, you young motherfuckers. Y'all don't know about that. Back in the day, we used to deal with knives. You know, a man that deal with a knife, man that survived a knife. And he lifts up his shirt, takes up his shit. He has a scar from the bottom of his neck all the way down to the top of his thigh. And he said, you know, I was laying there. And I was holding my motherfucking guts in, motherfucker. I was holding my own motherfucking guts in. I, have you ever seen your motherfucking guts? I'm sitting there like this the whole time because when you go to the labor pool, you just see other dudes. And you're like, you talk, you fellowship, you're like, what's up, man? What's up? You really don't know who you are dealing with. You don't know their backgrounds. You don't know where they've been. And this little dude was talking about, I'm holding my guts, motherfucker. I was holding my He was like the nicest dude, right? <laughs> I met him, had breakfast with him, talked to him. I was just like, never knew. He's like, you know, I'm laying there, you know, and uh, it was a good thing. Uh, some folks stopped, they, you know, and uh, they took me to the hospital because, you know, back then the ambulance wouldn't come to that part of the town. So they took me to the hospital and they stitched me up and I was there for six weeks. And, you know, I'm still here. And I was just like, then another dude, this motherfucker, I couldn't stand because he had gold teeth and what is it with some people with gold teeth that yeah, they gotta speak like that? Yeah, you know, you motherfucker. I mean, I don't know what it is. Is it, is it the gold teeth or is the uh, the motherfucker? I don't know. So he's like, ah, you motherfuckers. Well, I'm gonna show you some real knife wounds. I'm gonna show you some real knife wounds here. Um, I'm gonna show you what really happens to a motherfucker. So he gives up, and this is like some kind of bullet wound, knife scar, shake contest. It's like, who got shanked the worst? Who got cut the worst? Who was mortally wounded the worst? And it just went on and on. So Mr. Eh, you motherfuckers, eh, you motherfuckers. So he's taking off his stuff and he has knife puncture wounds because you can see it's like this bitch stuck me with a butcher knife five times because I was fucking her sister, right? I'm like, at that point, you know, I kind of came out of my stupor. I was like, well, you know, you're fucking her sister. And then people were like, yeah, man, you know, shit, man. I might have to fucking shank your ass. You fucking my sister, too. And, you know, you're supposed to be, you know, and it went on to this other stuff. And then he's like, motherfuckers, motherfuckers. That's just the part of the story. Oh, let, hold on, let me do his voice. Motherfuckers, motherfuckers. It's just part of the story. It's just part of the story. See, then he turns around. I got shot here. I got cut here. And then when I was at, you know, Rikers, I got shaked here, 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 and here. And I'm just sitting there like. And then this guy who did not have any bullet wounds, punctures, or nothing. You know, he didn't show his. He had them. And he said, you motherfuckers were lucky to come across inefficient motherfuckers. Because then he gets up and he just grabs this dude, right? It's like, if you're going to shank a motherfucker, you got to be like here. You got to get him in the neck. You got to get him in the heart. Or you got to get under them ribs, you know? Because, you know, a motherfucker may live if you do not shank in the proper. <laughs> I'm sitting there. I'm sitting there. Shankology 101. Shankology 102. Shankology 103. And he's just going, up. and the thing is, he is serious as a heart attack. He is serious about his shit. He is serious about shank lessons. And what's really, really scary, motherfuckers were paying attention. They were like taking mental notes. Because he was like, yeah, you got to get right here between the third and fourth. Yeah, like, you know, don't ever shank a motherfucker in the back. I mean, the organs, you know, unless you're going to get him in the kidney, you know, he'd be on dialysis and shit like that forever. But I'm just like... That was the longest 15 minutes of my life. The horn went off, we went back to work, and people that I just thought were normal dudes come into the rooms to go from the labor pool to get a little scratch like such as myself. I am working with killers. I am working with drug dealers. I am working with people who have 
who know where the bodies are. Let's just put it like that because as many people were speaking, there was other people sitting around like, looking around like, don't look at me, motherfucker. No, I, mean, I mean, it was just crazy. It was just crazy. My bullet wounds, and then, and then, and then, you know, you think this was gonna stop. This became a weekly contest. Someone new comes in, and then the first time, I was completely like, where's Waldo? Just against the wall, blending in. No one said shit to me because the shit was so outrageous. Then it's like, what about you, big man? What about you? You know, because big motherfucker like you like to get shot or shanked to some. Nobody just gonna come at you, man. No man, no. They gotta shank your ass. You know, kind of like slip up behind you. <laughs> I'm just like, I don't believe he just did that shit. I was like, no, I've never um, been to jail or prison. Oh, you one of them vanilla motherfuckers. You probably don't have a record and shit. And then there was a few other guys like, shit, I don't have a record either. You motherfuckers act like that's some shit to be proud of. And then there was like a few of us, we just kind of like, you know, we just started hanging out and like eating lunch together because we were the vanilla corner. <laughs> I mean, it was crazy. It was crazy. Then uh, after that, went back to my little room and I just sat there and I really thought, and I, I thought, wow. The whole time that I was living what I call a fake life, that fake life I had, because I thought it was good, but it really wasn't. It really wasn't. And uh, that's why it came apart so easily. Because when you have a real good life, something that you built, you just can't tear that shit apart just like that. You, you can't. And I just thought, man, I am maybe one or two degrees separated from these motherfuckers in life experience. I am not that far removed from these guys. And I'm just looking because there was one cat, you know, he used to draw during the break. And the guy had crazy talent, crazy talent. And uh, I just talked to him, and, you know, during uh, bullet wound confessions, uh, you know, he's got, like, he, he just like, hey, I got to keep it clean because I, I mean, he was on one of those one more time, I think three strikes, you're out. Like, if he if he got any more trouble, he was going to prison for, like, 20-some years. So he was, like, really low-key, didn't bother nobody. He was just like, yeah, man. I can't hang around those cats, man, because, you know, bad habits will crop up. I just can't do that because, you know, one more again, I ain't going to see the sun for a long time. So, you know, I'm just sitting there talking to these guys and really what I gathered and it was the same thing that was applicable to myself was a lack of knowledge. Not, and I'm not going to give you that, you know, knowledge of self. I mean, a lack of knowledge of how the world really works because... I have beat most of the traffic tickets I've ever gotten. It's just learning, you know, reading the the law books and learning about the rule of law. And the thing is, it will work for you if you know what it means and how to utilize it. And I was just sitting there. And it got me to thinking, it's like, why the fuck are you where you are? And it was like, you don't really understand how the world works. You thought you did, but you truly, truly don't understand how the world works. And that was the same thing with these other people. I didn't understand how the world works because I want you to really think about something. Because I got to, you know, after I got over my uh, fear of the felons, I mean, seriously, that's what I was working with. I started to talk to people and I learned stuff that many of these guys, no one ever told them there was a better way. I know it sounds overly simplistic, but no one ever told them. Because I would talk about growing up about cutting grass and stuff and I don't I don't know what it's like living up north. I, I didn't live up there as a kid and it was just like no there was nothing like that for us. There was nothing like that for us. I mean I grew up in a place where if you wanted to work there was literally money on the ground. So and also something else that I grew up. I grew up in a neighborhood with a lot of men. A lot of men. I mean not one or two but a lot of men. They were everywhere and they were family men. So that played a role because I saw how families operated. A lot of people didn't get that. And it, it, it's kind of funny because so many people that could have, I mean, some of these guys were brilliant. You know, just talking to them, just the way that they would put things together and articulate their views. They were brilliant, but because they didn't have that knowledge base, they fell prey to bad habits, so to speak. Um, and it, it was sad, right? Because when I got out of that situation, because... I was, the whole time I was in the labor pool, I was working scared because I was so afraid that 
I was gonna get caught up in that loop that many of those guys were caught up in. There were some guys, labor pool, you know, uh, manual labor jobs, they decades been doing that stuff and they just couldn't escape that. And when you do something for so long, it becomes a part of who you are. It becomes very, very hard to move beyond that as much as you want to. Uh, there, were, there was like, um, a guy, now that's gonna be a separate story because I'm, I'm gonna leave that one as a separate story because this puppy was so messed up. He deserves his own video. Uh, but there was a guy I lived with who would preach one thing, literally, and do the damn, do something completely different. But understand, if uh, you've fallen upon hard circumstances, and many people are, because I put in one of the groups, for a lot of you don't know that uh, Radio Shack's closing 1,100 stores. Rooms to go, not rooms to go, but uh, towards us, they're going to close most of their stores. A lot of people in the next uh, five years are going to be laid off. That we're good to go. And it's not like they're going to get laid off for poor job performance. Some people will because some people are fucking up. But these folks are going to get laid off because of the disruptive economy. And, you know, you've got two choices. You know, you can get into the disruptive economy by becoming an architect of that economy let me say that again by becoming an architect of that economy or you can get ran over or become roadkill by not fully participating and just sticking your head in the sand because I am also working scared now but from a different level I know that a lot of stuff that you know just Bluntly, a lot of stuff that worked two, three years ago doesn't work anymore. Just doesn't work anymore. And, and it's not going to ever work again because the world keeps changing. Some things will remain static. They're never going to change. But procedures, um, methodologies, yeah, that's going to change. So if you like down on yourself, because when I was doing uh, 30 days to 2,500, a lot of people. I got to hear a lot of stories. I got many, many emails. Uh, there's a lot of people that were, that when I did, they were like, well, I was doing 30 days to 2,500 because it's a permanent Facebook group now. If you want to join the links below. They were good, but like two weeks later, got laid off. I mean, I don't know how many times I am hearing this story that people have found me and watch the videos for a year or two, maybe three years, then it's like, man, I am so glad that I found you because I just got laid off today. But but I'm not scared. You know, I'm you know, I'm I'm worried, but I'm not scared because I have some direction. I know there's ways to make money without a job. And I sit there and I think about that. I didn't really have that kind of resource when I was going through my misery. You know, it was just a lot of trial and error and figuring stuff out a lot of evaluation and experimentation but going back to you know bullet wound confessions i sit there and one of the craziest things that ever happened to me by osmosis i learned warehouse distribution by working there for about three months i was going out every day i was there about three months um because yeah about three months i learned so much that would later on help me with my own business is freaking ridiculous. And I never really was like, because I remember one time my partner was like, well, how did you learn how to do that? I was like, I don't know. I, I, I had to like the Scooby-Doo thing. Like, I don't know, Shaggy. I don't know. And then I was like, oh shit, that's where I learned that. Because I'm not going to dump, because it's too much It's too much to dump in the one video. But um, essentially, there was many of those shit jobs that actually prepared me for the future ironic as that is crazy 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 all right so that's the deal so if you want to get your mind right go ahead and get a free copy of my audio book the hustler's mindset pimping your mind for success first link below uh, a lot of cool stuff's coming up so you want to be sure to join 30 days to 2500 dollars it's an awesome group and it's growing and i love it all right this is glendon and i'll see you on the good side